This video shows you how to calculate var with the Monte Carlo method and the Cholsky decomposition. I'll show you how to do it with the keyboard and without the mouse. Subscribe, hit the like button, share this video with friends and family for more great content. Let's get into the video. Google Chrome is the ninth thing on my taskbar. To open it, I press Windows key niner. Alt E is an echo, B is in Bravo to pull up the bookmarks. Arrow over to Google Colab. Tab over to value at risk, multiple methods. I'll run all of these cells with control function, F is in Foxtrot, niner. This video is gonna focus on the Monte Carlo method for value at risk as well as the adjusted Monte Carlo method with a Cholsky decomposition to decompose the covariance matrix of returns. But before I get into all of that, just wanted, wanted you to know what the assets are for today's portfolio in case you're curious. There's 10 assets in today's portfolio. The data comes from Yahoo Finance, so Bank of America, Citigroup, JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, American International Group, or AIG as it's called, Select Quote, the Blackstone Group, Kohlberg, Kravis and Roberts, Wells Fargo, and Morgan Stanley. Those are the 10 stocks in today's portfolio. I'm going to arrow down to the part about the Monte Carlo method. This is part of a larger notebook that I'm running with multiple methods for VAR, but want to focus on Monte Carlo and Cholsky decomposition today. All right, Monte Carlo begins here. So, I define expected returns with the argument weights, so the portfolio weights, and their log returns. And then I tell the algorithm, return the sum of the products of the average returns and the weights of each stock in the portfolio. So once that's done, I'm going to define standard deviation and that's a function of the covariance matrix of the returns and the weights to get the variance. And then standard deviation, which is also called volatility sometimes, that's just the square root of the variance. So I'm telling Python return numpy dot square root with the argument variance, which I've created above. So then there's the covariance matrix, which will equal log returns dot cove. So it's going to take the log returns of each of these stocks and print the covariance matrix uh, based on that. So I'll run that and you can see the, co the covariance matrix of the returns. You'll see that the covariance, for example, of Bank of America and AIG is the same as the covariance of AIG and Bank of America because it doesn't matter for order of operations which, which comes first. So they both have a zero spot, zero, 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 three, three, seven uh, percent return in, in this matrix. So that's multiplied by a hundred and that's about three basis points, 3.3 .3 basis points a day on average. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the portfolio value. I want it to be a million dollar portfolio. And the weights are going to be equally weighted. So it'll just do numpy.array. One over the length of, of the assets list, which is 10, divided by length. So that'll that'll normalize it 
so that they add up to 100 with the result that there's going to be a 10% weight in each portfolio. So the expected return of the portfolio, which I can now calculate is the expected return with the weight argument and the daily log returns argument. Portfolio standard deviation will be the standard deviation function that we created above with, with two arguments, weights and the covariance matrix, since standard deviation is not a weighted average. And then I can define something called the random z-score, and that will return a random dot, dot normal distribution from zero to one. And then what happens is I need to tell Python the value at risk time period. So over the next how many days or how many months or years, I'm gonna do five days for today's example. And I'm gonna define a scenario gain loss function that's gonna have several arguments. The Z score, the five, the five days that we're looking at as well as the portfolio value of a million and the portfolio standard deviation calculated above. That'll return the product of the portfolio value, its expected return times the five days, plus the portfolio value times its standard deviation multiplied by the z-score and the square root of the periodicity, which is days. So when you're dealing with standard deviation, you look at the square root of the time period rather than just the, the absolute value of the time period. I'm gonna tell Monte Carlo method and tell the Python algorithm that I want 10,000 situations, 10,000 uh, simulations rather, and run the scenario return, which is an empty list. 10,000 times with the random z score function. Then I'm going to append the scenario gain loss function with the four arguments portfolio value, portfolio standard deviation, the z score, and the number of days, which is five. Again, portfolio value is one million. Then I can specify the confidence interval. Let's start with a 90% confidence interval. So in the next, if we have a million dollar portfolio equally weighted across those 10 stocks, in the next five days, we're 90% confident that we're not gonna lose more than how much money. That's what this is telling us. And so we'll create the value of risk function, which will be percentile of the scenario return and that's going to be multiplied by 100 times 1 minus the confidence interval and we'll print that so you can see we're not going to lose more than at a 90 percent confidence interval we're 90 percent confident that we won't lose more than about 52,000 or, or 5.2 percent of the portfolio value in the next five trading days then what happens is you can plot all of that, create your X label, your Y label, your title, and plot the var dotted line, which will be in red, show the legend, and then I can run that. And you can see, you can see here the 90% confidence interval Monte Carlo method value of risk. So, there's within the next five trading days with that type of portfolio, there's a 10% chance that you could lose more than about 5% in a day, but we're sort of 90% confident given the calculations that that won't happen. Then what happens is you can run the same thing for other confidence intervals. So I'm gonna run a 95% confidence interval. maybe zoom in a bit and you can see there's we're 95 percent confident that within the next five trading days based on the data for, for those 10 stocks 
Data goes back to 2017 through the present. We're not gonna lose more than about 6.7, 6.8% of the capital. Plot that. And now you can see the red line is a little bit out further to the left, but there's now a 95% chance that we're not gonna lose more than about, uh, let's say 6.7 to 6.8% of the capital. Then what happens is you can even run this for a 99% confidence interval. That gets you about $95,000 so that's about nine and a half percent. I'll run that and plot it. And now what happens is we're 99% confident. There's only a 1% chance within the, the next five trading days based on our calculation that we'll lose more than about nine and a half, ten percent 10% of the capital. And so that's your value at risk that you could lose more than 10,000 over the next five days with that portfolio. But there's only about a 1% chance of that, at least according to these calculations. Now I'm gonna run all of this with the Cholsky decomp de decomposition. So import numerical Python, panel data analytics and statistics and scientific python.stats. Calculate the covariance matrix of the returns, just like usual. And then I'm going to decompose the covariance matrix using the Cholsky decomposition. So I'll create a variable called L, as in Lima, and that's going to be numpy.linearalgebra.cholsky with the argument covariance matrix and sort of decompose that. Then I'll specify the confidence intervals that I want to run this version of the Monte Carlo method with Cholsky decomposition for the portfolio. I'll specify all of that. So I want to run it at the 90, 95, and 99% confidence intervals. So I'll do that by creating a list with those three confidence intervals. And again, I want the simulations to be 10,000. Now you can actually perform the Monte Carlo method. So simulated underscore returns equals numpy.random.normal. And it'll be 10,000 simulations. And then you run the numpy.dot product of the simulated returns and the Cholsky decomposition with the argument T is in tango, which is transpose. So it's going to transpose that Cholsky decomposition. And then portfolio returns again, numpy dot dot product of the correlated returns and the weights to get the returns for the portfolio itself, as opposed to just the individual securities. I'll specify the portfolio value. I want it to be a million US dollars. So I have that here. Portfolio values will be the initial value times one plus the returns, of course. I'll, I'll calculate value at risk. And VAR, based on the confidence list as the argument, is going to be a percentile of the portfolio values and 100 minus confidence intervals times 100. So I'll run that. And then finally, I want to print the results. And you can see the results below for the modified Monte Carlo method with the Cholsky decomposition. As you can see, it gives a much tighter range uh, for the, the value at risk there between the different confidence intervals. When you do the modified version of the Monte Carlo method with the Cholsky uh, decomposition. So take this knowledge into the marketplace to be a better Python coder, better understand value at risk, particularly as it relates to the Monte Carlo method and the Cholsky decomposition. Again, this video was for 10 stock portfolio of financial stocks, data going back all the way to the first of 2017 through the present, which is, you know, this is being recorded on a weekend. so. 
market close as of the 14th that goes all the way up to the present for that data. Take this knowledge into the marketplace to be a better coder. Have a great day. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, leave a comment below, and please buy my books. The links to those will be in the description of this video.